In phlebotomy, following the correct order of draw is essential to ensure accurate lab results and avoid cross-contamination between additives. Each tube has different chemicals or additives in it and goes out of the order recommended by the CLSI may result in inaccurate results for your patient. Let's look at the order of draw. The correct order you are to fill the tubes if you are drawing more than one tube and what each tube color is used for. Some mnemonics that are used are Boys love ravishing girls like Dieters love Greek yogurt or Stop light red stay, put green light go. Let's look at what the letters stand for. The first sample we draw is the blood culture or the sterile samples. Sterile samples always come first to maintain sterile rules. While you can start by using alcohol on the patient's skin, you must use chlorhexidine or iodine to disinfect the draw site if you are obtaining a sterile sample. You must also wear sterile gloves as this is a sterile procedure. Other sample types just require gloves to be worn. After removing the plastic cap from the top of the sterile bottle, also wipe the rubber stopper with an alcohol pad before taking your patient sample. If you are doing multiple sterile samples, the aerobic culture is taken first followed by the anaerobic sample. Next is the light blue sample, then the red sample, then the gold or tiger top tube, also known as an SST tube. Next is the light green tube, known as the PST tube. Up next is the dark green tube, then the lavender tube, also sometimes called the EDTE tube, and the gray colored tube. Let's take a look at each individual vacuum tube and what chemicals are contained in each, and if there are any special considerations. Blood cultures are a broth mixture to help grow bacteria or fungi. And remember, as we just discussed, you must follow full aseptic technique. Light blue tubes contain a chemical additive called sodium citrate. Sodium citrate is an anticoagulant and will thin out the blood, keeping it from creating a clot. A light blue tube is used for coagulation studies like a PT, INR, or a fibrinogen test. Some special considerations for this tube include making sure you have a full draw. Not doing so will have an incorrect mixture of anticoagulant to blood. You must invert this tube three, four times after the draw. The red top tube has no additive in it. This tube is commonly used for serum chemistries, serology, and blood bank or cross-matching. Some special considerations with the red top tube include making sure to allow it to clot for 30 to 45 minutes in the upright position before placing it in the centrifuge, allowing the serum to separate from the blood sample. The tube should be inverted five to 10 times after the sample is obtained. The gold top or tiger top tube is often referred to as an SST tube or serum separator tube. This tube contains a gel separator at the bottom and a clot activator. Common tests done in this tube are the serum chemistry, immunology, and serology tests. Some special considerations include inverting the tube eight to 10 times, then allowing the tube to clot usually between 10, 20 minutes before placing it in the centrifuge. You should not allow it to clot past 30 minutes. The light green colored tube is also known as the PST tube. It contains a chemical called lithium heparin and a gel separator. Lithium heparin is an anticoagulant while the gel separator helps to separate the serum or plasma from the red blood cells when you centrifuge it. Plasma chemistries are done in the light green tube, which is why we want the elements separated. After sample collection, invert the tube eight to 10 times. You should also centrifuge this sample promptly. The dark green tube contains a chemical called sodium heparin or lithium heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant. Common tests taken in this tube include plasma chemistries. Special handling instructions include inverting the tube eight to 10 times after a blood draw. Some special tests like the ammonia level require it to be put on ice after taking the sample. The lavender top tube contains a chemical called ETTA. This is a chemical that is an anticoagulant and keeps the blood from clotting. Tests that use the lavender top are hematology tests like the CBC, hemoglobin A1C, or an erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Some special handling considerations include inverting it eight to 10 times after the collection of the sample. The sample should be filled completely and kept upright to avoid mixing the anticoagulant and the blood sample inappropriately. The gray top tube contains sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. These chemicals are an anti-glycolytic, which means they stop the breakdown of glucose in the blood sample. 
This property makes them ideal for glucose tests, such as a fasting blood sugar and glucose tolerance testing. You should invert six to 10 times. While most phlebotomy procedures involve familiar tubes like lavender, gold, or light blue, there are also several specialty tubes used for more specific testing needs. For example, the yellow or ACD tube contains acid citrate dextrose and is commonly used for HLA typing, DNA testing, and paternity evaluations. It must be inverted eight to 10 times to mix properly and is used in genetic and immunology labs. The yellow-black tube contains a broth mixture used in microbiology for blood cultures, preserving microorganism viability. A septic technique is critical when using this tube to avoid contamination. The black top tube contains buffered sodium citrate and is used primarily for the Westergren ESR. It requires a full draw and proper inversion. The orange tube, containing thrombin, is used for stat serum chemistry tests because it speeds up clotting, which is perfect for urgent cases. The light brown tube is lead-free and used specifically for serum lead testing and toxicology. It may contain sodium heparin or EDTA depending on the lab's protocol. The white tube contains potassium EDTA and is used for molecular testing, such as PCR and branch DNA tests. Lastly, the dark blue often called royal blue tube is metal-free and contains EDTA. It's used for detecting trace elements like zinc, copper, and mercury in toxicology. Like all EDTA tubes, it must be inverted after collection to prevent clotting and ensure accurate test results. What do you do if you commit an error in the order of draw? Assess whether any tubes may have been contaminated by additives from previous tubes. The risk is highest for tests sensitive to additive carryover, such as coagulation studies, potassium, calcium, and glucose. You should document the error as per your office policy and report it. If you think the results could be compromised, start the phlebotomy procedure over and complete the correct order of draw on the new draw.